um, so today, um, um, where are we? We're doing another kind of another, another different type of optimization. Um, so this is more our focus than the stuff we were doing last week, isn't it? Um, yeah, so how was this chapter, Federica? Um, right, okay. This chapter is very interesting. Okay, there's lots, lots to, to see, to go uh, through the uh, all different uh, steps in, uh, in the apps. Uh, it shows you how to optimize uh, the use of, the, of a shiny app and um, set some examples for you to see what is the difference with some op optimization. Uh, it's yeah. pretty intense, so <laughs> right, okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'll be able to complete the, this chapter. Uh, sure. So I'm up to. Uh, so the the reading data. I think uh, it's better if we uh, look at it the next time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. I'll share my screen and then uh, I might need your help. <laughs> right. Within some passages, okay. Let's go back to where we were. Okay, so this chapter, uh, with this chapter, we uh, learn what uh, to be optimized in a shiny hub. Uh, we compare uh, different app versions and learn how to read data in an um, optimized way. Um, the chapter focuses on how to optimize in common application when using Shiny. Uh, several versions of the same app are compared uh, to achieve a shorter and more understandable structure as well as more stable renderings. Um, for example, the first issue um, calling uh, highlights is the uh, reactivity. The the, um, uh, the the evil the evil of the too much reactivity within a shiny app. So when we call for the activity to act, uh, it might work too well. Let's say this. So mm. like if we say A invalidates B and B invalidate C and then again invalidate A which invalidates B which invalidates C and so on. So we start uh, basically from the very bottom uh, side of, of making a uh, decision within a app and we do step by step until we find ourselves in a like uh, needs for making a choice where should i go uh b or a and then again a or b so if we ask to to make uh, um, uh, um, um, automatic choices uh, it can uh, happen that uh, some recursivity behavior uh, keep, so the, the action keep repeating themselves uh, mm. without stopping. So we already talked about this. I don't know if you remember us when we were in the book club at the Mastering uh, Shiny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we talked about, about uh, reactivity and the, um, I think it was as well as the dynamic of, of an app. And I did that. Uh, yeah. When when we set all uh, like the, an action button, 
for stopping too much uh, reactivity. So a stop that, uh, uh, and when is the case that an app keeps uh, running the same code without stopping itself. So um, this is from uh, uh, R Studio blog, which is would be nice to to go through, but maybe later. So too much reactivity can lead to recursive behaviors. And so how, how to handle it? Uh, let's say that we, um, when we worked with an app, we, we go through a set like uh, as an apple by, by scratch, no? We have an example app, this, this is like an example. Mm. Then uh, we worked uh, we work through uh, this this example and set some specific steps and then we choose these steps in a way that the user can uh, select what is the the, 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 uh, the final objective he want to achieve so for example in the case of uh, uh, selecting dates you know it, 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 this is even uh, was uh, one of the first exercises in the mastering shiny book um, i don't know if, i don't know if it was even was just the first uh, exercise or something like that um, when you needed to make an app and then uh, change uh, um, the the date as the format of the date in a way that uh, the app could uh, update itself when you uh, send an input for a different date uh, without recursivity. Okay, so um, when for in, in this case study, as an example, we set a date in, 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 a, in, a, in our Shiny app. And to do this, we do date input, we use this function and then uh, um, as, you, as usual, when there is an input, uh, we select the input. Here is the, the first app um, that we see in the example. Let me show you right, how it is. Okay. So this is the first, the first app, no? If I run it, okay, so as you can see, hopefully you've seen it, uh, it goes by itself, mm -hmm. run, 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 without stopping. Okay, so we need to stop this behavior of the app, because it's, it's, it's not what we want. Uh, if we go um, inside the app, we see, and here is the book part of the thing. Okay, we see that uh, this um, this app um, doesn't specify very uh, the, the 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 date uh, in a way that uh, the app recognizes that this is a date. And some uh, at some point, uh, um, in a way that it releases uh, um, appropriately. No, so the um, a suggestion to fix this app uh, is to um, to um, set the select input in a way that you have. Uh, uh, this is the the first one. No. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is the second one uh, with the modification. Uh, as you see, here there was a tag list and then uh, the date input. Um, instead, in the um, in 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 the, in the app that has been optimized, he starts from the date input. And then the select input, where before was year, choose a year, and the, the choices. Then he set this bit. Okay, here choose a year and choices. Then select the format of the year. 
and this is um, uh, something that uh, for for um, the language uh, it lets the uh, basically recognize what we are talking about basically one uh, and this one uh, would be uh, one important step when we use date to uh, set uh, frame the format of the date as we want this is one of the first uh, uh, foundation for as optimization when we use date uh, then within the server function the server function here is as well as always input output and session and then we have the observer event, input date, uh, update, select input, session, year, and selected year. As you see, here is slightly different. Okay, I hmm. still, in, inside the observer event, the update select input um, is uh, um, below a message uh, within changing year two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I um, then run this up, uh, you see that this is more more um, like stable. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the uh, where is it? The uh, update select input as the input ID as a year and then selected year. Okay, you see that uh, here there is the select inside the input select here there is selected not here but here input date. So when uh, this input date means that anytime he uh, recursively. Uh, repeat in, in, uh, itself. <clears throat> okay, this is this is definitely input ID as well as uh, the the uh, the other the new version. We don't have uh, uh, this message. Then the observer event the observe event as uh, almost the same thing but he put uh, uh, like uh, a preventing thing preventing this update to be sent at application launch launch so uh, with this uh, condition if the if the input year and the format Okay. Yeah. So if the input year is not the format of the year, like uh, four digit, then the date he fixed fix it basically the date as a ISO date and recall the message. Instead, here is different, as you can see. Yeah. There is this print uh, if uh, sprint f thing which is for setting the date, but uh, in um, he uh, doesn't use it because this is a way to set the 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 date the structure of the date, but uh, it basically doesn't frame it. This is my understanding. So we see our uh, what is the difference running this this up, which is the two. Date choose yes is this one. If we run this up, we see that it's not running by itself. Mm. What is happening? So it's not running by itself. I can make modifications. 
I can set a new date and then change the year and it changes differently but it does run 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 by itself so the uh, they change it that I've, uh, that I've been made to obtain this uh, uh, so resolution of the app which is the one that we wanted because we don't want an app that runs by itself uh, are those ones that I've just mentioned so he didn't use this yeah <laughs> tell me Sorry, I was trying I was trying to work out why it the, what what the difference was and why that would prevent the the infinite the problem with it is a lot of stuff has changed between the two versions of the app that doesn't yeah. necessarily connect to the the recursive reactive no. problem one, as far as one of the notice one of the things I noticed uh, was at the top of the code snippet we're calling the UI as a function whereas the second code snippet we're calling it as a fluid page. I don't know if that has any ah, yes, 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 rendering yes, yes. And the, the, issues. Yeah. But then I don't that's know if that's, nice. well, I don't know if that's a typo at the bottom where now we're calling server function uh, as, as the same, the logic is different, but the, the server call is still a function. I don't, hmm. is that normal? I, I don't think it's the fluid page. The no. fluid page is the, like it's a fluid page. It's basically. I don't. I'm, uh, I'm not sure that, um, that that would be. I don't. Uh, yeah, that that's one more difference between between the two app. That okay. absolutely for for certain. But uh, so far, um, the things that I understood um, is the for date format that has to be uh, very well defined. And then uh, the, the, the message and the, this if condition. Yeah, yeah. That is the thing that prevents um, yeah. the up recursive updating uh, that verify within the app. But you know, what um, I've made a few apps, uh, not, not uh, still very, uh, I'm, I'm not feel strong. So I, yeah. I think in the future. We yeah, it's funny. Better. It's like, it, it, it kind of explains that, um, the, the date input, if you use its kind of default thing, it will take the current, you know, today's date for which the year will be 2021. Whereas when he originally set up the year selector, it's, um, it will take the first value in its collection of choices. So it will be 20, 2010 as its initial year. And um, so those two initial values are kind of fighting against each other um, in, in, in some way. Um, and by putting in this if clause, you prevent that... Um, you know the the so how would it work um if input year is 2010 um beside the, beside the fact that the app can release correct uh, answers or everything but the the point is that he has stopped uh, yeah, yeah. doing the recursivity behavior yeah so yeah, yeah. recursive behavior so um uh, this, uh, um, I think the UI, um, we will see within the chapter, the UI is more or less uh, like uh, your choice. So you, you put things inside, but the server is the machine, is the, the engine of the app. Mm -hmm. And um, you need to uh, set things uh, proper, appropriately or with some extra features inside the server. So in a way that you avoid uh, this recursive behavior. 
when we talk about the uh, dynamics and everything within the mastering shining we said that uh, uh, we wanted to um, set like a, a, a button an action button mm. that would stop that 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 uh, behavior when we do not need a button for stopping this behavior we need to put in something inside uh, the app that will uh, let the app uh, stop itself uh, when it, when it's not needed or don't even start because yeah. um, the thing is that I I see that I think the, the the beginning is always the most important part of, of everything <laughs> so if we understand that this maybe the rest would be uh, smoother uh, when if we see the server here we have an unobserved event Okay, the function, the observed event, the input date, then the year, which is outside this format, this bit here, is outside the update select input. Okay, instead yeah. here is everything inside. The update select input contains the session, the year, and the, the, the update or, uh, thing. Um, here we have the year and the format established outside the update select input, then a message that said this, this message is for, for the app, because it's for no one outside, because mm. I don't see, we don't see the, the message. No, no. So the, the message is, is for the app says changing the year to year yeah i don't know <laughs> and then uh, the update select input says um let let's see the app again if i run the, the this is the new one okay and this is the app there is nothing else just this so i have this uh, and set uh, like to the 1st of June 2021, then I change it to 2015 and it uh, resets everything to the 1st of January. Then I go 2020, 1st of January, then I set the date to a different. So, like, like I choose the year and then because you know it takes too long, no? If I want to, to switch to another year, it takes too long. So I can switch within months and then select a day. But then if I want to, like, I want to, to, to set a date, uh, which is far away in time, I need to, to do, it takes too much time for me to, to reach uh, um, another year. So I, I change the year to where, which in, the year I want, and then I select the date. This is uh, pretty usual. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. The, the thing is that if the, the first app does this, mm. because it's inside, the thing is inside. <laughs> Uh, um, okay, let's go uh, forward. So we have seen this. There's more. Okay. Um, we have seen the, the example uno, uh, sorry, <laughs> example one <laughs> and the example two. Uh, and then, um, so we, we stopped uh, looking at the, the server, and so the observe, he makes, Colin makes, the, the author makes a comparison between these two functions, the observe and the observe event. And he suggested strongly, do not use observe. So mm. the main guideline is to use observe event as much as possible and avoid observe as much as possible. Even if he uses within some examples to show you what uh, what does and what is the difference. So looking at the steps uh, taken for building this first example up, we see that changing the next 
input doesn't make any difference. But if we had reserve op opting option, I can say we can see the recursive taking in a, taking action. So this is what uh, uh, the app did. This is the, the, the third app. Okay, we have this app that with with a text box, and you can uh, choose if you want upper or lowercase. And then when you click reverse, he starts uh, um, releasing all the reverse that the of the word that you have put in the text box, as you see here. Yeah. But he doesn't release the output in within the app. He releases it in the console. Okay, we can see this. Um, we just here. Okay. I uh, don't know if you can see my console. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, th this is the app. If I say hello, he writes here in the console. Then uppercase and he writes in uppercase. When I do reverse, he starts doing this. It doesn't stop. Right. Okay, so this this app okay about this app we have several versions of this app. Okay, this yeah. is the first, this is the second with some improvements. This is the third and this is the fourth and I think is now. Then here, he highlights some rules, some some things that uh, will be better if we use the observe event instead just the observe. And we see this uh, more clearly. Uh, just I, I wanted to to catch the differences within the. If, we like to, or uh, we see that uh, some differences. This is the first one, and uh, the, this one here that doesn't stop. And um, we have uh, the, we, he uses this. Um, I don't know the name of the. What is it? Uh, the CLI mm -hmm. package. Yeah. Package. Yeah, it's for kind of printing to the console in a kind of nice way. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, just that. Exactly. So um, then the function here, this is the first one, it uses a tag list uh, just because you, you put like two boxes, one on top yeah. of the other. So it's a list. You tag, and uh, there is a list of things that you put inside. OK. Uh, and, and what is inside is a text input. Then in the server, he observe. Oh, oh. OK. He observe. Uh, um, an, an increase of the uh, so the recursivity starts with this mm -hmm. setting i to i plus one, and then there is a, um, a rule which is a character, and then ask to print the result. And obvi obviously, he didn't put anything else, so he just ran it. But I don't see why the things uh because it's there is not uh, um 
yeah there's no it, it, so that's the initial version of it yeah yeah the, se the second one the second the second one still a tag list but then the text input is followed by a select input mm. so now i can choose uh, the case if i want lower and upper case so and they are in a list inside this function tag list this server has the cat rule as a category because it's a character and then a condition if this is lower then print to lower otherwise print to upper and here it's all fine then third passage with stringy uh, there is a check box input the third thing reverse and this is the thing now you know um, like hmm. mixing up the words uh, the the letter within the word that you uh, have input the um, okay within the server there is the input text that we didn't have we don't have an input text in the server and uh, uh, the condition okay so if I yeah uh, so you're maybe yeah sorry no uh, yeah so uh, that input that uh, the input text is reversed by it is reversed and be, because it's reversed and that observe block um depends upon it kind of so you you're up you're updating a value based on changes in that value so you kind of um <laughs> yeah i get yeah sorry i follow yeah 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 uh, so you uh, um set the input as the text and and name it as an input text then you set the condition as we did it before if input case folding uh, whatever now the input the, the condition is input um rev because it's the reverse the word use a stringy i think it's a reverse input and then the case folding a condition is um, after that because the, po the position of the the thing even the things is even important so then we see the last the the fourth version which is the the final one i think yeah so here besides the, the ui which is the same and we finally have settled the things that we have a text box uh, the case folding and the, the checkbox for the reverse in the server he set a reactive value okay this reactive value is the thing that makes um, the app running yeah uh, in recursivity you know because it reacts to an input yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to put a stop yeah. to this react. So the observe is still the same, but uh, there is this bit here, like the reactive value R, link it to the input text. So the input text continues reacting. And then the case folding. So, 
côté, euh, where is it? Ok, so um, there is some potential in using observe. Ok, um, but uh, sometimes this um, um, reactive value within the observe function it's overreacting. Yeah. So he says. If you look at it uh, more closely, and we see this here, I don't know if you can see. If you, if you, if we look at, at these two and we compare them, the observe and the observe event, we see that the things that change are, are those one uh, with the stars, with the asterisk. Yeah. And we, we see that uh, instead in the observer event are just this the first two they are um, the changing inputs instead of everything. Yeah, yeah. So here basically the, the first um, input affect all the other um, syntax in the in the observe function. In the observe event, he observed an event, which is this bit, and then um, goes through. I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if it, that's correct yeah, to say yeah, yeah. like this, but this is my understanding. The book says, whereas um, in this refactored code using observe event it's easier but I, I can't read it okay it's easier to identify where the invalid uh, invalidation can happen hmm. yeah it does it, it does look a lot nicer at least to to have the um the the values upon which the event is triggered at the very start of the block to kind of um and then yeah it it just need it neatens up the code but i didn't realize it was so uh, i see that, that this is the same cut rule if yeah. else if print else and print but it adds these two things on top, which are the events mm -hmm. that the function observe. So in essence, you're setting those values first before entering the, the actual function or the logic uh, if else statement then, right? Or the iterator. So your, your input rev and input text, input reverse and input text are, could be considered global to the function itself. So the server is going to set those values based on the input from the user before entering into the iterator and or the if else statements. So you're 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 waiting for the event to change before the rest of the logic. You don't trigger it until it invalidates, correct? Am I reading that observe event correctly? I believe so. I guess so. Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> so this is why he emphasized uh, the things that it's better if you use observe event as much as all the time, as well as do not use observe <laughs> as much all the time. Sure. Okay. So then we can uh, we sh so when when you build an app you look at it as needed. So then uh, um, he said more um, like features inside the app which are triggers and watchers for optim um, as optimizations steps. So create flags 
uh, create flag object with uh, an init function and then trig these flags with trigger function, invalidate the, this flag to a reactive context uh, with watch these flags. So to solve this kind of issues, Conifa provides a package, which is uh, a gargoyle package that provides wrappers around the shiny to turn up uh, your app into an event-based application instead of a full reactive app. Nice. This uh, package, which is this, Uh, 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 maybe so this gargoyle, I don't know what to do here. So it's a package that provides wrappers around Shiny to turn your app into an event-based application instead of a full reactive app. The framework is centered around listen and trigger mechanisms. It works with classical UI and just need tweaking the server side of your app. Uh, some examples. We can see this. Okay, this is a shiny um, app with an option, this is talkative, option talkative, function, I didn't try that, so I'm not sure okay. what can happen. I don't know. So anyway, it is an error. Um, I did I did uh, install the package. So let's go for what. <laughs> so this this version uh, is centered around listen and trigger mechanisms, and um, use uh, an init something function to initiate a flag. A flag is like a pin that hmm. for, for, for the object that you put inside uh, your app. And then he watch it, he pin it, and then watch the thing, uh, the flag inside a reactive contest, so context, so that it will be invalidated every time you trigger the thing within this flag. And then finally, he trigger the flag. So an example of this is aside this gargoyle um, package, because mm -hmm. then he has implemented this uh, kind of behavior of uh, this of optimization uh, steps with the xmake package. If I see says um, an, a, a practical example of this is the XMake uh, app. When you see that the the, the picture is on the, the on the right side, it releases it, it would be sorry it releases just when everything is done. So all this the the option have been uh, selected and approved. Then he releases the, the 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 final picture. So this is the like the, the kind of behavior uh, described with the implementation uh, within these three, the use of these three uh, steps. A practical example of this again of this implementation uh, is um, the use of um, of a special environment, okay, where you store the values and. Um, he now uh, talks about uh, the R6 data, uh, data storage. I don't know if you are 
you, you know you are aware about this um, object oriented programming framework this OOP framework yeah. this R6 uh, it's a package that you install and load as any other packages and it's a support for uh, the R language the R language is a functional language and the R6 is an object oriented programming framework okay so like uh, you make function you make functions um, with R and then you store it the the result inside the boxes okay that uh, interact to each other with the help of R6 for example even Python it's a object-oriented programming language which contains all these things instead mm. R it's a functional program uh, programming language but uses R6 as an object-oriented programming framework yeah. Something like that. So, he, um, the author now uh, uh, suggests to um, use R6 to storage blocks of your app in a way that they are contained uh, and then uh, release it when 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 it's needed. Is that clear? Yeah. Yep. Um, so, basically, so would you would yeah. you be would you be storing um, like reactive values inside an R six class, or is can can you can, can Shiny respond to changes in an R six class in a reactive way? um is it presumably it's like uh hold on presumably they it, it's just a, a place to store your reactive values i, is, I guess i guess uh you're right uh I, the, yeah i was gonna say i took r6 as almost like c level or or uh machine code level so your 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 human readable code the r studio or the the script itself uh when you drop into r6 it's now at a compiler level um of storage it's more optimized and it's more efficient there was a there was a topic we were discussing i want to say it was earlier in the book uh where you had different storage mechanisms databases uh hard drives and then r6 uh, and it, it was almost like it was talking about being in RAM uh, or even being in cache uh, memory. So you're 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 getting closer to the processing of the the app itself. To answer Rush your question about can you store it in R6, I believe the answer is yes, uh, and it would be a more optimized way for the for the. Um, it's a faster way to access that memory versus going off and and saving it someplace else. Okay. Okay. I think I'm I'm fairly certain I'm stating it correctly. I don't know if it's the statement I'm making about the the C level. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, right. It might be not even apples and oranges, but yeah, yeah, cool. cool. Um, so the the example that he does is a uh, an app that doesn't work. <laughs> Basically, because <laughs> I. Uh, I didn't have, I didn't spend much time um but uh, I show you Okay This is the app It's, it's quite long. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there is, uh, let, let's say that you, I need to put something inside here. If I don't put anything, so here, this is empty. My UI is empty. Mm. So I need to put something inside. 
and um, but uh, he used a tank list. Then there is this function, which is uh, namespaced ID for input and outputs. Um, use IDs to identify input and output. So define the input, basically, namespace it. And then uh, um, if I use some other apps that we have just uh, like used it before, I don't know, like this, this case, uh, case folding thing. Put this inside. Then I, I need this thing. Okay. Okay, so this is just as an example, okay? Uh, I, uh, this is not correct. Okay, so um, this is my data cleaning UI. So I'm supposed to put something inside, like um, data frame to be clean. Then my data cleaning server works with some, um, there is a, a module server, an observe event, um, all these things here, and then even trigger a plot. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not using that, but I just repeat this again here with this. Uh, UI okay now if I run the app Okay, let's let's um, uh, let's say that uh, um, so he basically um, say that you need to put something inside here as well as here. Yeah. Uh, in the second. Uh, I think you've thing. got an extra. Yeah. Parenthesis there or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I if I run this, doesn't work. But the thing is that when you put something inside here, um, you need to just add something in the UI. Okay, and that he doesn't require anything else uh, in the server. Yeah. But uh, uh, this app is made like you have a data cleaning UI, a data cleaning server. And then a plotting UI, a plotting server, and these are two separate things. And then he starts with the UI function. When he recall the two UI above, the data cleaning and the plotting, and uses the server. A more complex app with R6. So he says that this is R6, but then he calling R6 this way with this my data processing that he has made. Where is it? Here. Okay, so he does set this thing, my data. 
this way. So this is the box where you put inside the thing. A, public, uh, a list initialize the data and summarize the information. Then this will be used While you're doing that, I was just going to mention, so I, I quickly associated R6 while we were discussing it. Um, I'm going to retract part of my statement, uh, not all of it. Um, it think of R6 as, uh, Frederica mentioned Python. Uh, Python, if you use a dev tag, a definition tag, you're, you're uh, creating an object inside your code. In object-oriented programming, you can think of it as C, C++, Java, any sort of uh, an uh, object uh, process, you're creating your global global uh, main function, uh, uh, and then within the the main, you're you're just calling on all your other uh, sub functions. Um, that earlier uh, example you had, Federica, uh, with myapp.r, um, and so that's a that's a sub function that you're calling in there, where you're passing a new variable. The new variable is calling on that uh, uh, sub function, processing it, and then passing it back again. Um, mm -hmm. Object oriented programming in its own right is very optimized. If you're not familiar with it, though, it does get slightly confusing when, in your past experience of building an R script, everything is very linear. It starts at the top and ends at the bottom, and you just call on packages, you know, uh, et cetera. Uh, maybe. Uh, the modular function within Golem uh, of, of creating your own sub processes, I guess. Does that help at all? And if I'm over explaining it, I apologize. I don't mean no, to do that either. Uh, the, 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 the nice part is uh, follow it that. So you, you, this is the way he uses R6. I don't know if you ever use it. Um, set an R6 class and uh, says my data uh, is made uh, of, of a list uh, which I will put things inside. So, so he set the box. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? They're class functions, yes. Uh, uh, so your, your class, um, you're creating that or initializing that memory space for that function to pass uh, data in and out of it uh, as needed. And when it's, it looks similar to base R uh, working with variables where you're using the dollar sign. Uh, within that R class, the dollar sign is pointing at that memory location of where that variable stored initialized variable, um, you're allocating memory space to your program. Um, so you're, you're saying that I've got a, uh, Oh, is yeah. it like the, the initializing the self data and then you're you're yeah then then you you just recall the the, the the data in fact if when you run the app he says i miss my data i miss my data okay so um then you use this to test and this is the nice part because he, he runs the test on an example data like empty cars and says this is the test function test that test an r6 class works and says my data is my data as before you see this this box that he has made okay he recalled the box and says my data new data that i add the data empty cars uh, and then said, I expect this, my data is my data. Okay, that my data is an R6 class. And then my data, uh, when summarized, it's a table class. And my data, <laughs> and the data of my data is empty cards. Okay, and then I expect that the summarize of my data is a summary of empty cards. And this test part. 
So mm. this is nice, very clear. Hmm. Now, if I... <laughs> If I handed over a shiny app that to to a colleague to to work on that was based on R6 classes and trigger and watch and things like that, the 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 whole design of the app would be quite foreign to someone who's worked with reactive values and you know. The, the the more typical shiny app thought process. So I'm, I don't know. I'm a bit worried that 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 now. Well, Russ, you're stating it correctly. I would only add that unless that person is familiar with a a, a foundational learning of Java, C, or C plus mm. plus, yeah, I then it that. would then it would look somewhat familiar to them. Uh, the the scripting of what you're doing okay. in that in that format would look familiar to to their uh, uh okay okay learning right um right uh yeah it is part of r that i don't know a great deal about the r6 um s s setup um I, I mean, I've used classes and objects in Python and stuff, and it does look quite familiar from stuff from that. Um, I, I, I just it the the way that it's presented, it looks like that that in some ways it's a good idea to have one object that holds lots of different bits of information r relevant to your um, app. And that doesn't feel correct to me because, you know, setting up, uh, uh, setting up a, you know, if, if I've got a lot of different tables that are relevant within an app, holding them all within a single R6 class seems like a bad design to me because it would be harder to build uh, an object of that class for use in testing. It would mean that there's a single file in my um, code which will be modified many many times over the progress of of, of maintaining a um, an app I, I, admittedly that i'm probably taking it to the extreme but like presume I, I, rather than kind of passing around the uh, th this single object as if it's a global thing I, it just I, I just like the i just prefer passing around individual tables that just seems a, a more sensible thing because you only need to think about that single entity rather than construct an object that has multiple different things within it but i don't know i mean presumably the, the there are examples where it's valuable to use r6 and I, I i just haven't experienced them yet um anyway i i hate to be that guy but i really do need to head off um uh yeah, of would would we like to carry on with this chapter next week and do the stuff on um the setting where r does too much and on re optimizing for reading data <laughs> Um, right. Yeah, there, there is this last bit to, uh, to do, this, uh, yes. this but if, if we want to understand a bit, so uh, I don't know, it may be, it may be nice to, to set up this app, putting yeah. things inside yeah. and, and make it work. Uh, I'm not, uh, not sure. Um, then there is some other things with categories as as a as a uh, round table uh doing the chapters um i would be up for uh 16 but 
I really am after chapter 17, uh, getting involved okay. in, in some JavaScript on the, on the outside of R or even ingesting it with, with, a app adding extra JavaScript calls. Um, sure. I don't have a lot of experience with JavaScript and I think it would be advantageous, but, um, that's me being greedy. Uh, that's fine. That's do you fine. want me to, choose, do you want me to prepare? Chapter that you want to. <laughs> well, um, do you want me to prepare 16 and, and, and 17 together or, uh, no, I think that would be too much to to cover in okay. in one week. But I I can probably pull together some stuff on chapter sixteen. Yeah, I didn't want to. I don't want to feel that I'm pushing anybody in yeah, obligation to that. to go with fine. sixteen. But I can definitely take it on if you would like. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so uh, what what should we do next week? Should we should we finish this chapter, chapter fifteen, or should we go on to chapter sixteen? next week what? i think sorry federica well yeah, i'm available if you want to uh, to end uh, this we can do it otherwise we we just i don't know the i don't know i'm quite happy to finish chapter 15 yeah. next week if that's okay yeah. with you and ryan um okay cool uh great well i'll i'll see you all uh next week i'm sorry about this i've got various things going on in the background lots of babies screaming and things um anyway <laughs> we'll see you i'll see you later it's lovely to see you again bye, bye. thank good you good job frederica bye bye, -bye.